officially live. Wait till we get a couple people joined up on us. So, while we're waiting, we'll give people a setup. Premium Hand Sean happens to be with us. Cam happens to be with us. We have a telescope. Have my wonderful wife, Jolene. And this schooner park normally does not get this many visitors, is my guess. But I think we're getting quite a few visitors. So I'm going to wait for people to log in. <clears throat> See if anybody has any questions. Some I don't do very often. Oh, no. Remember, we're alive, so anything can happen. Like the phone falling over because of wind. Now? Huh? I'm just checking You're just checking us out? Ah. Yeah. Oh, we've got, we got 15 people on logged on live. <laughs> Give them another show. Or is that how much time I've been on live? We got six people logged on. There we go. I don't go live very often, but again, go ahead and ask me any questions you guys want, poker related or eclipse related. So we got a beautiful spot here. Got Jolene messing with uh, some shadows because the sun is right up there. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, you're not going to be able to see anything until the total eclipse happens. Will the eclipse help me run hot at PLO later on tonight? Well, this is an excellent question. This is what Meatman226 wants to know. Is the eclipse going to help him run hot? Um, I don't know. I guess it depends. Yeah, you're getting filled with energy. My wife says yes, because you're getting filled with energy. Uh, good shifts. Good shifts. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, are you in a spot where you can have totality of the t eclipse? Or are you tuning in here so that way you can see it? That's my question. Either way. Meat Man 226. I think you might run hot tonight. We'll see. <laughs> Cam's like, what? When we were driving down here, uh, aka Tilted Degenerate. Oh, hey, what's up, Tilted Degenerate? <laughs> you know, uh, I haven't told many people this, but I'm on page 93 of my book. When am I coming to St. Louis next? You know, um,. That's a good question. I will be driving through St. Louis on my way to Las Vegas. So I will be stopping there right before Memorial Day. Probably like May 21st to May 23rd is my guess. It's just a guesstimate. Um, but, oh, speaking of uh, Tilted Degenerate, so um, it's kind of funny because as Premium Hand Sean and I were driving down here from the Airbnb, Cam was in the back seat. Now, Cam is not... A poker player uh, by any stretch of the imagination not that I've played poker with him but um, while we're driving Sean and I are talking about uh, he's gonna be on a live stream at the lodge and uh, we were talking about stakes and after about I don't know six minutes Cam says you guys just sounds like an alien language to me you know and it didn't even dawn on me yeah if somebody doesn't understand poker when you start talking poker to them uh, you know, or if they're just around it, there it's just a completely different language. So, but yeah, we've got we've got exactly one hour before the totality of the eclipse. So, I know some of you guys then are just going to log off and come back on in an hour. That's fine. Uh, but I'll just sit here and let you guys basically wait with me, unless you guys have any questions. So, besides the one already asked. Maybe I should tune back in in 30 minutes. I don't know. We'll see. What do you think, Sean? I'll keep her going. Oh, keep her going, he says. Keep her going. How do you classify player types when playing live? How do you use HUD stats to derive playing styles online? Okay, this is a good question from Mocon. So how do you classify player types when playing live? Well, 
Mo, I really appreciate you asking me this question. And just so everybody knows, um, there are no questions that are pre-made, even though I've played with Mo before. Uh, but, and Mo did not know this, but I'm in the process of writing down a bunch of strategies in a, lots of pages. So I've got like 93 pages of a book that I started writing literally two weeks ago. And uh, I do classify f players with four different classifications. So in my book, and I actually talked about this in my podcast that I did with Cards and Capital, but in my uh, book, the classifications of players are basically you have your wreck player uh, or your splashy whale, somebody that you know is really just there to have a good time. They're the guy that's drunk on a Saturday night. They're the ones that are easily targeted. Then you have, I call them uh, Tilted Degenerate Tonys or TGTs. Uh, tilted Degenerate Tonys, which are people who are just absolutely on tilt. They're calling stations. Um, you know, they might be stuck two grand in the game. Those are other people that you want to target. And then the other two categories of people are what I call pros, uh, which keep in mind, there's only like out of 20 poker players, only one out of 20 of those people are going to be professionals. You might run into some situations where you sit at a table and you see two or three pros at a table. That's more common when you're playing like two, five, no limit. Uh, but in PLO, uh, in some of the mixed games, really only one out of 20 people are going to be professionals. So the third category is professionals. And the, the fourth category is what I call aspiring professionals are really, really good wrecks. Um, they're people who still have full-time jobs, but you can tell that they're weighing their options on whether or not they want to become a poker player professionally because they make good money doing it, that they track their stats, they study, they watch videos to get better. Um, so that's how I actually classify four different types of players when I'm playing live. And so generally the aspiring pros, uh, there's a specific way you can target them. Uh, mo the majority of the time aspiring pros like to make hero calls. So what I tend to do, and this is something I discuss in my book, is uh, when I'm dealing with somebody who I have identified as an aspiring pro is I'm going to overbet the pot and no limit in Parliament Omaha where it might look like I have a dry ace when in fact I have the nut ace I'm going to bet pot uh, and maximize the most amount of value on tilted degenerate Tony I'm probably going to do the same thing if I'm dealing with somebody else who is an actual pro I'm going to get as much value as I think I would call based on the range of hands that I think they would have and then against the Rex, uh, try not to give them a chance to get lucky as much as you can. So that's how I classify player types. Uh, how do you use HUD stats to derive playing styles online? Now, uh, there's a couple different things. HUD stats for me don't do a whole lot. Uh, I do have HUD stats, but most of the people I play with online, I've played with several times. So I have... Um, some information on them and how to exploit their weaknesses as best as I possibly can. Because keep in mind, as a poker player, that is your job, is to exploit weaknesses um, and to discover those weaknesses. And then when your opponents find out that you're exploiting that specific weakness, if they adjust, then you need to adjust. It's a constant pivot game. But um, there are a very, couple few times where I've used HUD stats. For example, last night I was in a $20 2K PLO tournament and there was a player named uh, Crab Cakes in Football, and I had a queen high flush on the turn, and I checked it to him and he bet pot. Because his VPIP was like 31% and some of the chatter with some of the other guys that I, I heard that he was a little bit of a tighter player, uh, literally I'm sitting there with either second nuts or third nuts, I can't remember, but I didn't even hesitate to fold because I knew he was a tighter player. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but in certain situations, whether it's tournament or whether it's cash, you need to apply the appropriate amount of pressure based on your equity uh, versus waiting until you get there. And he's the type of player that waits until he gets there, which there's nothing wrong with that in cash, but in tournaments you tend to falter a little short, uh, which, you know, sometimes happens. But um, yeah, I probably use HUD stats maybe once every three or four months in very specific situations. So it's funny you asked that question because I ended up uh, using that once last night. 
As stacks get deeper, is it correct to play much tighter out of position? Uh, that's a good question. I don't, I think as stacks get deeper, uh, it's okay to play looser out of position. And also, if you look at a lot of GTO charts, and I'll give you an example. Last Monday, I lost 2,400 bucks. And there was a hand that I played against against the guy that his name's Crazy John, and we've got a lot of history. And the flop came uh, deuce, eight, king, a complete rainbow with one spade. And I had deuce, 10, jack, nine, queen. And so when you think about that, you say, well, you don't have anything. You have a pair of deuces. But because we were so deep, uh, there's a lot of backdoor draws there. I was out of position, so I go ahead and check it. John bets pot. I call. Turn is like my gin card, 10 of spades. I pick up a complete wrap. Any card from seven to ace, I'm going to win. And I pick up spades, even though it's only queen high spades. Uh, but because we were so deep, I had proper odds to call. Now, John ends up winning the hand, which it doesn't matter what the results of the hand was. But as you get deeper in stacks, even though you can say, hey, you need to go run a runner to get a straight because the biggest bet you can make is on the... Uh, on the river, um, you have more implied odds to do that. Um, all right. Uh, that was my other question I was answering. Uh, do you three bet fewer hands from the blinds? Not necessarily. Um, I don't personally. I think if you have a hand worth three betting, it's worth three betting. And for those of you guys who just logged on, when you see a partial eclipse, even on the phone here, it's uh, you're not going to see anything. Oh no, thank you though. Okay. Um, you're not gonna see anything until the full eclipse, which happens at 3.09. So we're like 40 minutes away or so. And we've got quite quite a setup here. Uh, all right, trying to win at PLO in South Florida. Any advice, Professor? Are you gonna, uh, Bill Man, are you gonna be down in Hollywood next week? Because that's where we're going to be. Um, but in South Florida, if you're playing cash games, uh, you're better off playing 225, PLO four, because the 5-5 five, five, PLO5 five tends to be really tight. Um, the 10-10 ten, ten PLO5 is a little bit uh, a, a little bit loose, but it's a 10-10-25. Ten, ten, but generally speaking, the 2-2-5 is going to be better, um, better situated for cash games, in my opinion. So, okay. been hearing that short stacking is the move, but watch your stuff act about PLO. Here you go. Yes, we are starting to feel the temperature drop. And the wind is picking up. Uh, I don't like short stacking all the time. Now, I will tell you, I give students homework assignments where they have to buy in for a short stack. And that's because in their development, they need to be able to understand certain situations where short stacking might be appropriate. Um, but that's generally speaking, uh, rare occurrences. Like some people like to short stack when you do double board bomb pots and that's not the right mentality unless it has a capped bet per, per pot. Uh, any advice for tilt? Um, don't tilt, uh, meditation and yoga. Um, you know, the thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to tilt is if somebody sucks out on you that, uh, uh, that's okay. That's what you want them to do because they're getting it in with bad, bad odds. Bank management tips for aspiring pros. Um, keep in mind, travel expenses are part of your bankroll. That's basically what I would say because it's a realistic thing. If you have to travel to, say, for example, Los Angeles to go play in the Tournament of Champions like my boy Sean does here, um, you have to still have to pay for that. It's not free. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be in Hollywood next week. Bill, definitely come up and see me. I've got a bunch of uh, uh, Play Smart and uh, Run Like a God uh, card protectors that people have been asking for. Um, biggest downswing ever. Uh, biggest downswing ever, I think, was October of last year. Uh, yeah, it was a $17,000 downswing. Um, looking back at it, there was bad decisions that was made uh, combined with playing bad. Um, and not listening to myself. So my, my, my wife is nodding her head. Yes, she, she does not like it when we go on a downswing. Um, biggest upswing ever. Oh. Uh, oh. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, in in October of 2021 was pretty good for me. That's when I won that big O tournament um, in Vegas uh, during the series. Um, that was a good one, uh, but that was more like a specialized event. You know, you hit it once, one of those every once in a while, but it was great to hit it, I'll tell you that way. Is there a way you find students? Um, most of my students actually come from online or from playing me live. Uh, matter of fact, when I was at Rivers, it was funny because I was playing 25-25 PLO, and uh, I was before I played that, I was playing 2-5 No Limit Hold'em and made a... I don't know, it was like a $200 call on the river with pocket tens when there was like an ace and a queen on the board or an ace and a king on the board and it was good. And it was funny because everybody was like, how do you find your students? And I said, well, a lot of times I'll just play with them. And then after I made the call, the whole table was like, oh, we see what he means. So, and that was Hold'em, but I don't play Hold'em very often. Uh, what days am I going to be in Florida, April 10th through the 17th? I don't know if I'm going to be there longer yet. Uh... Does the wife love the upswings? Yes, she 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 understands the upswings and the downswings um, better than others. Oh, we got somebody to hold this. Oh, so this is one thing you can do with partial eclipse. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. I don't know if you can see it on the live. You can start seeing all the little moons that are blocking the, the light coming through from the sun. So one of the, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. I just, so one of the things my brother said once upon a time was, oh, it's just gonna get dark fast. And I said, hey, this is something you get to experience. So if there's a bunch of trees with leaves here, we'd start seeing that, but um, all right. We'll, we'll tune back into that here in a few minutes. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be down in Florida from the 10th through the 17th. I'm gonna come back down and sit. So we've got another 40 minutes. Ugh, give me a minute. Am I gonna be the one that, oh, the other Josh. My brother-in-law's name is Josh as well. Uh, how do you separate running bad from playing bad? You know, that's an excellent question, Mo. I like that question. At the end of the day, if you're not sure if you're playing bad or running bad, one of the things you should do is ask uh, someone else, not like this is a bad beat story, but just say, confide in another poker player, because we all know other poker players, and say, hey, you know, I need to know, am I playing bad or am I running bad? Especially if they know the person that, for example, the session that you were in, um, especially if they played in that session and they're honest with you. Um, I would say that that's generally like how I separate from playing bad and running bad. Like last October, uh, I was doing both. There was times when I would have, I remember one specific hand uh, in October. I had, I think top, no, I had middle set and the nut flush draw. And I got it all in for like $700. And the guy literally had uh, bottom set with backdoor runner runner straight draw and it came runner runner straight draw and i remember I, uh, outlaw was with me at the time and i looked at him and i said i said it's one thing when i've been playing bad like i had been all night i said it's something totally different when i run bad like that so in some situations you know you're, you're just running bad um can we see the wife say oh, say hello hello <laughs> <laughs> or hello. Yeah, I'll post some of the uh, photos, as you guys know, uh, as a professional photographer, Uplifted Boudoir. Not used to taking photos of the sun, but um, we uh, have a pretty good setup here. So this is her, her nice camera, and this is our telescope. Uh, do you believe that you play better stoned or sober? Oh, oh wow. That's, uh, you know... The Groovy 2V, what an excellent question. So if I'm playing a tournament, I play better sober. If I'm playing cash, I play better stoned. Um, that's from even tracking it with my tournament tracker. Like I was out in LA a couple weeks ago with uh, Cam and uh, I ended up uh, chopping a tournament, an OE tournament for like 4K, which was good. Um, but I didn't, I didn't smoke any weed that day at all so if i'm in a tournament i'm better off to be 
uh, sober. If I'm playing cash, I'm better off to be stoned. Uh, not a weird way, but curious how life works, especially with marriage and dating for poker pros. Bill, that is an amazing question. One of the advices I give my students, if they are telling me that they want to be a professional, for example, I had a student, um, I won't say their name, but uh, they were a, an RN or a CN, and they mentioned to me that they wanted to become a professional poker player and quit their full-time job, and I said the biggest thing you have to understand is you're not going to have a relationship for two years uh, because most poker players need to get in a rhythm and understand themselves and how they deal with their demons and how they deal with their upswings um, better than everybody else uh, before they bring in another human to go through that. Um, but when it comes to dealing with marriage, uh, you know, I, I tell you guys all the time I have a unicorn. She understands if I come home and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go away for two weeks. Uh, on a poker trip, she just says bye, and uh, <laughs> she respects it and understands it. And um, uh, it. I like to break. <laughs> <laughs> and she apparently likes a break for me as well. Um, but yeah, it, it goes interestingly, you know. And everybody handles it a little bit differently. Um, I'll be on a poker trip with Wayne, for example, and I'll give my wife daily updates like, oh, I won 3,000, oh, I lost 2,000, um, oh, I lost five grand, oh, I was in the game for eight, you know? Um, so I give her updates. Uh, some other people's relationships, for example, like Wayne, he gives his uh, partner an update at the very end. So he gives his uh, spouse an update at the very end. Um, but let's see, what other questions do we have? Uh, you should make a live for hand reviews where people submit hands and you give feedback. You guys can submit hands right now if you want. I'm totally okay with that. We can we can work that into the mix. I've got four minutes where I'm not going to be looking at hands. That's true. I'm going <laughs> to at 3:09 we're we're uh, we're going to be looking at the eclipse and we're going to do it all together. Now I will tell you. Um, when we did this in uh, 2017, uh, it, it, doing it live really doesn't do it justice, just to give you guys uh, being upfront about that, but that's okay. I'm still gonna do it anyways. Um, all right, next question. Advice for bomb pots, single and double board, and for PLO5, PLO6, on app, any games advice? All right, so the more cards you have in double board bomb pots, the tighter you need to play. So if you're playing PLO6, uh, you basically need the nuts on one board, and then you need to be drawing to the nuts on the other board. If you're playing PLO5, having backdoor equity starts coming into uh, a little bit of a factor i mean it does obviously with plo6 but now you can start saying well i have one pair on this board plus i can go backdoor clubs plus i can go backdoor straight um but generally speaking the more cards you have uh the tighter your play has to be so on plo5 you don't necessarily need the nuts but for example if one board is like queen queen four um, you need to have at least pocket fours. If you have like queen, deuce, deuce, X, then you might, then you might end up, uh, consider folding if you don't have any equity or value on the other board. For single board bomb pots, um, you know, you got to figure everybody's range is completely open. Uh, there's not a lot of single board bomb pots that go on. So if you are playing some single board bomb pots, I would make the recommendation just switch it to double board bomb pots. If you're at a home game and a player, the, the game runner is concerned about it breaking the home game, put a cap on it. And actually in the book that I am writing, I did a whole chapter on double board bomb pots and then I separated it to do uh, the different strategies you use for double board bomb pots with a cap and no cap. Um, but generally speaking, if you're playing like a double board bomb pot game, if your bankroll can afford it, buy in for the maximum uh, and the reason why is because it allows you to apply more pressure on the turn and on the river which is part of the key in double board bomb pots because say for example you have a thousand dollars in front of you and your opponent has a thousand dollars in front of you and it's a hundred dollars on the flop and you bet a hundred if your opponent calls you know you can make it 300 on the turn so if they call there 
and you bet 300 on the turn, they know on the river you can make it your remaining stack. So say 700. So there's gonna be some times where they're gonna fold for 300 because they don't wanna call another 600 on the river. So having the appropriate stack size is always important. What percentage of your play is tournaments and what percentage is cash? Ooh. Um, premium hand, Sean, are you, he's got his headphones and I was gonna ask for his, his thoughts on it. I would say probably 90 to 90 for, for night. I'd probably say 90% of my play is tournament or is cash and 10% is tournaments. Um, that's my guess. I'm just going off of my, my gut here. Probably about 90% is tournaments, probably even a little bit higher. I mean, the, the, the reason why we travel a lot to places that have big tournament events, um, we go, we start playing cash in order to get basically like the free rolls in for the tournaments. That's what we found has been the best system for us. So our system doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best for your system. But what I mean by that is like, if we go down to Florida, the first thing I want to do is win like 1200 or 1800 in cash. So that way when I go fire a $600 bullet, if I lose, I'm not like, oh, this is really hurting my bankroll. I just kind of look at it as a free roll um, in a sense. But I, I do play probably way more um, cash compared to tournaments. As far as hourly though, uh, yeah, it's probably 85 to 15% of my time. So I'd probably say it's closer to that but I feel like 90% is cash. Um, but, uh, and there's a big difference between cash and tournaments, uh, quite substantial. Um, Kenny Powers, yes, I will be bringing back the cornrows when my hair allows it. <laughs> right now, my, I know, I, I do this and you guys are all gonna be like, put the hat back on, I get it, it's okay. I can't do cornrows yet again, but I will be doing cornrows um, again six setup with the telescope thank you uh i love the content uh, thank you what's going on well um right now it's really 40 minutes out from the eclipse uh, <laughs> wayne even a knit with spousal updates <laughs> i don't know about that it's just everybody's a little bit different um you know but me i i just i don't know it's fine. But no, we are here in Lima, Ohio. I'll give you guys uh, an idea of what we're, what we're here looking at. We've got, there's a ton of people around. We're in this beautiful park area. The wind is blowing. It's like 70 degrees. Um, you know, even if you look straight up at the sun. It's a partial right now. You really can't see it on here. Um, but I'm gonna put on my my handy dandy solar eclipse glasses and see how much of a partial it is. Right now, my guess is it's almost probably a quarter. Did you, is it about a quarter right now? Here, can you hold this up for just a second? There, there we go. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Let me see if I can put this over the lens. I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna give it a whirl. Ah, you can see the orange dot, but it really does not do it justice. You see, there we go. Push it in a little bit. So that's where we're at right now. <sighs> so, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. You guys can keep asking me questions. Um, how many of you guys are going to be in Vegas this year for the series? Oh, now my wife's doing a live update as well. So, this is always good. So, Sean, what do, what do you think about the eclipse so far? Put it pretty incredible. <laughs> it's day one of our trip together. <laughs> Josh, what do you think of the eclipse so far? It's, That's all I can say. It's a nice day. It's a nice day to be outside. And it's definitely a nice day to be outside. So, um, where did Cam go? Did he just go to use the bathroom, I suppose? But, mm -hmm. where? let me know where you guys are coming in from. Uh, 
where are you guys located at right now? I know where you're at, Mo. Mo, are you going to go see the full eclipse? Because I think you're within the uh, uh, full eclipse of the sun, aren't you? I guess we'll find out in a few minutes if he's still watching. So, But yeah, this is, it's a nice day. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to be a solar eclipse watcher, there's a lot of waiting. You sit here and you wait. It's, you know what time we got here this morning? We got here at 8.30 in the morning. Yep, and then we didn't see anybody out here on the island, so then we set up our stuff at about 9 o'clock. I think we were either the first ones or the second ones, but we, you already packed up all the food and everything. Oh, wow. Nice. Florida. Watching from St. Louis. Nice. The Groovy 2 from St. Louis. Have I played with you before? Because I used to play in St. Louis all the time. Um, we've got 33 minutes. Something tells me we're going to have a lot more than 11 viewers logged on. WNY. Is that Winnipeg, New York? Or is that Wyoming? Ben from WNY. I think that's or Western New York, one of the two. So that's good. Um, what do you guys think of the videos? What did you guys think of the Big O uh, tournament video? I am. Uh, I did a Deuce to Seven triple draw like dry run while I was in LA on doing that for a whole tournament video, and I think I might end up doing that while I'm in Florida. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Western New York Buffalo area. That makes sense. I'm give everybody an idea of like... Oh, sweet. This is even better, everybody. Look at this. So, here is... Uh, the partial eclipse right here. Through see, a telescope. Through a telescope. Now see, this isn't something you would get if I just put my phone up through there, but uh, that's what it looks like right now. That's the part where we're at. Um, videos have re-inspired my game. I appreciate that. But yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think on... 30 minutes! 30 <laughs> minutes out, and here we've got this set up here. Yeah, if you guys are curious, Figuring out that this adapter goes in here takes like, I don't know, like four hours, especially if you're stoned um, or if you're not stoned. But this whole contraption, this is what it looks like so far, everybody. The temperature has already dropped about probably at least 10, 15 degrees. I think that's just the wind, honey. No, it's literally dropped. I oh, the you've got a... <laughs> Alrighty, so... There you have it. We've got, it's pretty cool when you can actually see it slowly moving. I think that's pretty cool. Sounds like great. Yeah. Wait until it gets completely dark. It's so yeah, cool. you'll be able to see it. Um, it'll probably be better for me doing photo just showing it here while she does photos honestly because like i said if i just pull it up to the sun this is what it looks like right here if you pull it directly here oop. oh it went black <laughs> but yeah to keep adjusting because it's moving so it is moving yeah but so from here we'll uh we'll be able to see it and you'll be able to see the photos now we have a special solar flare lens on our uh, telescope, so that way it does not burn out the telescope, nor does it burn out the camera. But you can see we're doing all sorts of stuff. So we are 20 minutes out. Do 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 20 minutes out, everybody. This is also where you'll start seeing the. The things in the ground. The partial shadows, yeah. the circles in the ground. So, but yeah, just so everybody sees like how many people are here. Wow. We're in a town that has like 400, 500 people. 
And I think there's 500 people in this park quite easily here in Ohio. Yeah, good stuff. Are we able to start seeing it? Hold on, so. See all the half moons and half circles you start seeing instead of full circles? It's pretty cool. So it'll be more. But yeah, go ahead and if you guys have any more questions. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm just going to chill out and enjoy the breeze. We got. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm glad to, to share this with you guys. You know, one of the nice things about being a, a professional poker player is being able to um, <laughs> be able to do fun little adventures like this. Um, I like what you said, Johnny Wrestling. I just want to push all in with Deuce 5, 8, Queen, Rainbow, and Bust Wayne in a big pot. You know, I will tell you, um, I think as Wayne has played with me, I've Does seen him. pictures of the little holes? Ooh, yeah. As they're going sideways, I put in the bait. That's awesome. Um, but he's developed as a player. I saw him get it all in for like 300, 350 bucks with Jack's pre-flop. And he had the right equity. And it's one of those things where I think as more and more players develop, that's what happens. So this is what she's showing everybody here. <coughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. You see how it's 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 starting to get darker. Like the shadows are a little bit different. It's pretty cool. Feeling feeling the coolness like it's starting to cool off pretty quick. But what's really funny is I remember uh, last time when I was in I think it was Belleville or Carbondale for the last eclipse, uh, Illinois. Um, it cooled off super, super quick. All right, so Bill Mann says, so on my app game, they play PLO5 or six card single board as well, and the people are unhinged and lunatics. Seen people call off with middling two pair and no redraw and struggle to print here annoying. Um... I don't know where or what I'm doing wrong though. So one of the things that I tell my students, uh, particularly in like, for example, tournament spots, when it boils down to it, when you're about to get all your chips in, you need to ask yourself, can I pick a better spot? And what I mean by that is, uh, like some of the people I play with online, they don't mind getting it all in for 500 bigs on really random hands. And uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, but you just gotta make sure you pick good spots. For example, I got it all in with a hand 5577 seven, double suited once at Hustler uh, Casino out in LA. And I got ridiculed by a lot of players cause I got it all in three ways. And at the end of the day, I think I had 36% equity. At the end of the day, because I'm a professional, I don't mind having a small edge if it's 3% equity because for me, uh, poker is one big long session. If you're somebody who's playing as an aspiring pro where you still hold your full-time job, you need to ask yourself, do I really wanna get it in with just an extra 3% equity? No, I'd rather get it in three ways with 50% equity. So what I'd advise you to do, Bill, is to start picking a little bit of better spots. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, as far as what Johnny said, as far as the club, uh, the, the action in the club, the action at the Madhouse is insane. I mean, this week I started off down 2,400 bucks. 
and at the end of the week I was up 600. Um, I didn't do all that in one day, but uh, it, it does happen. How old am I? I am 44 this year. Uh, I'm 43 currently. I always spend my birthday in Vegas. It's June 6th. June 6th uh, might be the first day that I am trying my 100 to 10K challenge in Vegas at the Paris. Um, it's what I currently have it slotted in for. The challenge that I'm running into is I think June 7th or June 6th is the $600 um, PLO event or the $1,000 PLO event. I can't remember. So there are some tournaments at the series that I'm sacrificing to try doing this, but uh, I'm, I'm still going to do it. But yeah, I am 43 going on to 44. Um, Johnny's correct. Uh, <laughs> uh how do you deal with collusion on app games that you know bill that's an that's an excellent question um there's really the best way to deal with it is knowing the players um one of the reasons why i feel comfortable at the madhouse is probably because i've met 75 to 80 percent of the players myself uh it's just one of those things that it's harder I shouldn't say it's harder for somebody to cheat you when they can see it right in your face because that's that's not a true statement in my opinion um, but it's knowing people does help you know like when we tell people hey we're going down to Florida uh, there's people that I play with online that are coming us coming with us to Florida you know um, and there's people that I play with online that I'm meeting for drinks and dinner uh, down in Florida so poker is a pretty small community um, one of the biggest things that I, I try to eliminate, if I notice I'm playing on a club that has several Europeans at the same time, not that they collude, but it's just one of those things where um, I don't feel comfortable with that as much. It's like the first time I think I played in Hallelujah Park down in Florida, and I sat down and everybody's speaking Spanish. The dealer's speaking Spanish. The players are speaking Spanish. The general rule is English only at the table. The first five hands that were dealt was all Spanish, and I don't know Spanish, but I was like, this is weird. Uh, it made me feel uncomfortable, and it's like, in some, no, I'm not saying Hallelujah Park colludes because those guys do punt, so they don't collude, but I'm saying, if you're on a, on an app where everybody's speaking a different language, it's usually one one sign to, to be careful about. Um, also, how much uh, 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 how much uh, I don't want to say like action, but how many times are you going three ways to the river? You know, and this is something that's like a big red flag when it comes to no limit games. So if you're playing a lot of no limit games or PLO four, PLO five games where there's a lot of times where you're going to the river and there's like four people. Not, and keep in mind, like some clubs, the action is just crazy. But uh, in some clubs, if it's consistent with the same people, you're like, hey, what's going on here? Um, you know, we watch for those things. I don't say we, but like the, the clubs that I play on online watches for those things uh, on a regular basis. Um, Alan's got me for a $100 charity match. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, if you guys haven't already on the 100 to 10K challenge in Vegas, I've got, uh, it's like $3,000 worth of charities that are committed. Um, if I manage to buy in for 100 and run it up to 10K, uh, I get to donate money to the charity of my choice. And um, my viewers uh, commit to that. And uh, if we can get 10K in commitments and I run it up to 10K, I might just donate the whole 10K. I don't know. It's it's gonna be a hard grind. I've already I've I've dreamt about that. Um, you know, I've had mushroom trips about that. <laughs> I've had nightmares about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, how do I deal with collusion on app games? Um, I try to limit the amount of uh, different apps that I play on. Um, you know, and even even uh, I get invited to apps all the time. Uh, you know, I've got a student of mine who has a great Big O app out of New York and he's like oh, professor you'd kill him and I'm like I understand that and maybe maybe I'll play with him uh, eventually but like right now I'd rather play with him live before playing with him live online just because that's the kind of person that I am um, plus he said that they're pretty loose and I could probably clean up and I just feel like if I know that going in I'm kind of taking advantage of the situation but 
coaching him and seeing all the hand histories, like I can, I can go through a bunch of hand histories and get a good idea if somebody's being colluded against. Um, I appreciate the charity match, by the way, Alan. I also appreciate the charity match from everybody, uh, including Steve down in Florida, which hopefully I'll get to see again. Um, we were supposed to go out to dinner, and I don't think we had anything scheduled, so we're definitely going to. Um, so, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's not the place to be in Miami. Yeah, <laughs> um, I appreciate that, Bill. I'm well aware. Let's take in a little quick peek real quick before I answer some more questions on what it looks like. Go ahead, Cam. You can look if you want. Well, look at that, guys. That's where we're at so far. We're at like 70%, 60%. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Cam? Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome? Yeah, for sure. All right. So I didn't even ask you if you wanted to sing. Oh, um, I feel like I should have brought my uh, speaker in mind. Yeah. I do too. So pass. It's up to you. Come on, you, you have a voice that carries. You have a voice that carries, and everybody's going to be recording it, and it'll go viral. Well, that's why I don't want to fuck the national anthem. I've heard I've I've heard you enough times that I know you're not going to botch it. So, uh, if you want to do it, and it's a minute and a half long, um, <laughs> the eclipse is at three oh nine. So I can tell you like. Right before. Yeah, so if you want me to tell you like 3.05, yeah. give you like it's a right. three three minute yeah. countdown. Because if it's going to take, do you want me to give you a three minute countdown at 3 .02, like 3.03 or do you want me to say, hey, at 3.05, three it's minutes so ago? Know, it's 3.05. Okay, I'll let you know at 3.05. All right, so I'll go back to answering questions. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, they do a lot of Spanish at the table. I was warned about that ahead of time and I just had to experience it for myself once. Um, had a union owner steal from them and then they had players who lived together. So it's dodgy. Well, Bill, I hate to, so Bill, one of the things that my students love about me and one of the things that a lot of people love about me is... I tell you what you don't want to hear that is usually the truth so one of the things I'm, I'm hearing from you when you're saying that the club you're speaking of it has issues they're in a union they had a union owner steal from them they had players who live together this is probably not a club I would belong to um, I would not belong to I would not play I would not support why would you if you're doing it because of a different reason I understand but Here's what a lot of times people get stuck in a trap of, I call it the rake back trap. I really haven't talked about this much, but generally speaking, if a club gives you rake back, you can start playing the club not to win, but just to acquire rake back. And you're not really advancing as a poker player on that at all. Um, and then really, what are you playing for? You're playing for the rake. So essentially you're playing for the house. So if you're playing because you have a large rake back or something like that, it becomes this trap that poker players get uh derived in and they don't a lot of times they don't understand it because they're like their first attraction to any club is oh i want rake back i want rake back and they just don't understand that rake back is like one of the worst things for online poker players and i know some of you are going to give me a lot of scuff over that and that's okay that is a hill i am willing to die on um vehemently so uh if you look at the gg scandal uh, where the 200 no limit with all the bots that were on there and the only reason why they were making any profit was because of rake back that right there should just tell you everything you need to know but yeah if they're sketch and people are playing in the same apartment and stuff that's a big problem and I'll give you a, a perfect example in case you ever are curious about my integrity I had one of my students say to me professor professor I'm my buddy is playing on poker stars it's a rated site on Michigan, and it's a site I play on. I like Poker Stars. Poker Stars has a lot of great tournaments. I have nothing negative to say about Poker Stars, but I want you to understand that this is a regulated site. My student says, my roommate's playing on Poker Stars. If I log off of the Wi-Fi and play on my phone, we can play on the same table. Since everybody else is doing that, don't you think I should do that? And I said, no, and don't tell anybody that you just told me this, that you're contemplating it. And it's used as a teaching story. So it's not like poo-poo, shame on you. 
But for me, it's it's a teaching moment because here's somebody who is in their young age, they're in their 20s, and they're just thinking, I just want the same advantage as the next guy. Shouldn't I be playing on the same table with, with my roommate? And if, if you're playing in a club where you feel you have to do that, you're not playing at the right club. Um, yeah, so I'm just pointing that out. I'm going, sorry, I went back in the comments just to see a couple. Yeah, the union is very hard to police. My personal opinion is I'll, I don't like, the unions are good for big tournaments, and that's about it. I don't like cash games on unions. Um, do I play ACR PLA tournaments at all? Seems like the same Eastern Euros all day, every day. So many years ago, uh, and by the way, everybody, we're 14 minutes away from full eclipse. Uh, but many years ago, when I wanted to get good at tournaments, I actually asked a good friend of mine, Nick Sampson. I said, Nick, you're really good at tournaments. I said, how'd you get really good at tournaments? And he goes, I just sat there on ACR and played $5 tournaments for like a month. Well, this was a really interesting time in my life because I happened to have about a month all to myself. This was in between my first marriage and my divorce and my second marriage and just trying to find myself. So I literally spent a month on ACR grinding $5 tournaments. I think I played four or five $5 tournaments a day until I started consistently um, getting down to the final table all the time. So I don't play ACR tournaments anymore, Ben, but I used ACR tournaments, the micro buy-ins, five and $10 buy-ins to practice all my tournament theories. But I haven't logged on to ACR in probably five years. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing, I've had some GTO companies reach out to me to endorse their product. And I don't endorse uh, very many things uh, unless I fully believe in them. And the thing is, is like this company, I went back and I said, well, you don't have three blinds, you don't have straddles, you don't have eight handed. Now they came back to me and they're like, we have all these things. So, you know, it's one of those things when a company listens to people, I'd be more likely to be like, yeah, go, go do that. But like ACR, they have bots, they've had bots, they know they have a bot problem and they just kind of, wave it under the rug and as much as i love tom duan he's one of the most respected poker players in my opinion um as far as skill level uh you know i think he he said that he didn't realize acr had a bot problem because he doesn't play the no limit 200 or the no limit 500 level because he only plays nosebleeds so it was eye-opening that somebody who might be endorsed by them wasn't aware of their bot problem but we're all human so i could understand that as well scenic i like that let's hear some plo advice from the man himself what's cam got to say on the plo games cam doesn't play poker <laughs> uh he doesn't play there any longer oh okay that's good so you don't play on the app any longer so we are 11 minutes from totality it is 258 eastern time guys we're getting down i'm going to show you guys what the uh, uh what it looks like you can, you can see the shadows are starting to be more prolonged. This is really cool. Here's what the sliver looks like. Oh yeah. So the eclipse, it's like dating. Seven hours of preparation for four minutes of pure enjoyment. <laughs> Good wisdom from the professor, right, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> those are rookie numbers. <laughs> those are rookie numbers, right? <laughs> the seven hours or the four minutes or both? No. <laughs> uh, Josh, are you getting excited? It's more exciting than... I don't know what it's more exciting than, but it's pretty exciting. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, it passed here at 137. Very cool. All right, sweet. Is the Eclipse going to be run once or twice? Excellent question. I think the astronomical gods only allow the Eclipse to be ran one time. <laughs> Very good question though. I like it, but uh, <laughs> outside of Austin. You know, I was really surprised with Austin. I have a great story about um, uh, Austin. They have some of the best sushi in Austin. I can't believe it. Um, downtown Austin, they don't, you don't even eat it with soy sauce or anything. You just eat it with your hands. It's a long story. Really impressed with a guy named Kurt. 
he took my buddy uh, Phil and I out on uh, on on the town, and Phil's no longer with us. But um, I'll never forget that because at the end of the day, we went up to this amazing steakhouse. By the way, it's three o'clock. Um, we went to this amazing steakhouse with this guy named Kurt, and uh, uh, we're at a super expensive steakhouse overlooking the Gulf of Mexico. We're having like eighty dollar scotch. And the sun is at the perfect angle. And Kurt looks at me, or, or not Kurt, uh, Phil looks at me and he says, you know what, Josh? He goes, I'm so glad I listened to you, you this, listen to you on this. He goes, because this is something I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. And if you know Phil, he was the type of guy where when you'd say good morning to him, he'd say, what's so good about it? So um, he usually had a, a pessimistic view on most of life, but somehow I managed to make him smile. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of my good stories about Austin. Um, Lawrence saw it in Austin, total totality, awesome. Um, if you're ever at the lodge, send out a message and I'll try to meet you up there for some 2-5 PLO. I'm terrible, but it'll be fun. I might be at the lodge at the end of this month, but don't, don't, don't quote me on that yet. Uh, there's a lot of factors in there. My wife's birthday's in May. She's going to Arizona for a photographer's conference. Kind of like to see my wife before that because then I'm going to be going down, touring uh, a studio, and then going to uh, uh, Vegas. I'll be driving to Vegas in late May. So kind of want to see the wife before that because I'm going to be in Vegas for all of June uh, from basically a little, that Friday after Memorial Day all the way until July 6th. So um, here I come, Vegas. Appreciate all the content. I appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. Short stacking for a beginning. Uh, ROLF slot bottom style as deep as possible. ROLF slot bottom style. I'm not sure what you mean on that, Dominic. Uh, uh, but I will answer short stacking. I generally don't like it when people uh, play short stack. It's 302 camp. Camp, 302. So you got three minutes from 305. Um, but I generally don't. Uh, uh, short stacking, there are certain strategies that you need to use for it. Usually, if you're taking shots at games or if you're short stacking tournaments. Um, generally as a rule i don't like it when people short stack by not me personally but as a player i will use what i call a springboard method if i see you involved in a pot where say for example you open to 25 and you have 200 left i might kick it back to 100 for you so when you get back to it you're more likely just to jam all in and uh, other players will know that and it ends up affecting action across the table which not a big deal you just have to be really wary of it Matter of fact, one of the things I was telling uh, Sean, who is amazing at No Limit Hold'em tournaments, is when it comes to PLO cash games, one of the most overlooked things is uh, uh, stack to pot size ratio. Stack to pot size ratio is probably the biggest issue for most people in Palo and Omaha. So when you start off as a short stack, you're not getting the proper odds for doing that so we are at 303 we are five and a half six minutes away from total eclipse you can feel it starting to get dark here um yes yes you can actually feel how much different it is and here we're going to give everybody an update with the sliver here we go oh oh and with any luck it's kind of cool you can feel the difference in the light like it's still light you can feel the tra the light like traveling here but it's like it's getting blocked off a little bit mm. Johnny Wrestling, what is your screen name? Is that Johnny Stacks? Dutch Nurse, I'm excited about this. Of course, we're getting some more people logging on. We're at 304, look at this. This is going pretty good. This is way better than our first time. 
2017? Yeah, we saw it in uh, Carbondale, Belleville, yes. that area. Oh, yeah. And it was only a minute and some odd seconds. Like, this is going to be way, way. So Lor Lawrence, if you... Uh, time of the year. So, Lawrence, it is 3.05, Cam. 3.05. Lawrence, if you message me on WhatsApp, well, uh, I'll get you squared away on that. So, um, well, if it takes a minute and a half, you got, you got a minute and a half to get ready. So, um, yeah, no, singing, he's going to sing it right before, I think so. So we might, we might have a special cameo by Cam. I just got a dealing of this Aria job at Aria. Oh, get, you know, working in the box is good money. Uh, I used to work in the box. I used to deal as well. Um, and it does make you a better, does make you a better player too. So we are four minutes from the eclipse. Moving to Florida to split my time. Oh, are you also a pool player? <laughs> I used to be a pool player. We're at 306. 306. We are three minutes away. Uh, but I used to play pool really, really well. Uh, my family used to have a pool tournament every year. Uh, I was always the favorite. Many times I won it. Um, they'd have an eight ball pool tournament and nine ball pool tournament, but I don't play pool nearly as often. By where the cars are parked. So. His little husky oh. got off the little leash. Here we are. So cool. Well, Cam, do you want to sing? That's up to you. We got like two minutes. Yes. <laughs> I so want to, bro. Then do it. If I act like you're in the shower, bro. I feel Dude, you're only live on YouTube. We only got 14 people watching and 400 that are here. So if you're if you're gonna do it though, you got to do it. Says it like total total eclipse happens in two minutes. You said it takes a minute and a half. Yeah, about a minute. All right. You want to? All right. I'll give you space. Or go over here and sing it. Sing to the water. Like right. oh, go man. ahead you're good you're good you're good if you guys don't know cam's one of my life students life coaching students so all right just do it bro just do it go if you don't want to you don't have to it's up to you uh oh you got a lot of people who are like do it do it do it do it oh I might have to pass, but All right. It's only because of how I feel about um, feeling like my bro. Um. Uh oh, you got people who are like, come on. Oh. <laughs> well, we're at 3.08, so we're about one minute away, everybody. We're a minute and 50 seconds away. Oh, it's getting so dark. I can see the stars! That's a minute and 50 some seconds away. Oh man, that might be just dust. <laughs> <laughs> False alarm. <laughs> it's just dust. <laughs> All right. Speak on your truth. All right. So here we are. We are literally one minute away, everybody. So if you've got your glasses on right now, that's what it looks like. We're almost going to be in total eclipse. It's starting to get cold. We're going to keep looking up. Yeah. We got this. All right, we got about one more minute. You got to understand, uh, uh, Cam and I were at the studio earlier this week, so he's already worked his voice quite a bit. So here we go. Oh, my God, guys. It's almost there. Oh, my God. I've got so many goosebumps. Josh, number two. <laughs> oh, here we go. Don't take it off yet. All right. Here we go. Cam is definitely a winner. We are less than 50 seconds away, everybody. Does this thing give you a countdown? Where are we at here? Oh, shit. Oh, look. It just got instant. Oh, yeah! We are almost there. We are almost there. Almost. Oh, we've got a countdown behind us. We're going to have four minutes of total eclipse, guys.
Here we, we are almost there. Almost there. There we go. Oh, you can't see it from the phone, so go ahead and there you go. There it is, there it is. Oh my God. You take the photos. I told you this is like a religious experience, Sean. You can't see it on the camera here, but I'm telling you right now, what you feel right now, four whole minutes, being able to stare at it, this is what it looks like right here. Oh my gosh. It's really hard to okay, get me, that in there. Let me zoom it in here. Yeah, you do you. I'm going to post the photos on my vlog. Yeah, the moon is definitely covering it, guys. Yeah, and oh my God, just looking around a four full minutes. Yeah! Oh my God, look at the stars. You got all the solar lights popping on. You can see some stars. Oh, and it's funny because the light is bending around the moon. Uh, I live in the Upper Peninsula. Day to night. Where do I live day to night? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can Look, see. What is that thing on the bottom of it? You see? That's a solar flare. Oh. Yeah, that's a solar flare that our telescope's picking up. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you guys you guys can't see this, but this is this is pretty amazing. Like I said, I'll post... Uh, I'll post some stuff, but this is pretty cool, man. Like it, the temperature just dropped. It feels like it's a, a, a Michigan camping summer picture. Oh my God. It's so awesome. And like all these people back here. Oh my God. So here's what it looks like on the telescope. Keep in mind, wife's gonna get photos cause we only get one shot at this. Well, unless we go to Spain in 2026 or Egypt in 2027, which we already started looking at that. Uh, but yeah, it is just so cool in the middle of the day to feel it. You get a cool breeze here. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Like I said, even if you zoom in, you just see it because it, but it's there. Yeah, you can see some stars. Oh my God, you can see like the bottom of it. Yeah, the bottom of it coming out. Like the extra light, there's just a tiny bit of cloud cover, but not much, like just a little bit of a mist. Should I raise Ace Ace Deuce 3 suited on the button? Yes, yes you should. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we've got, uh, we're almost out of it. We've got less than a minute left. We have less than a minute and you can already start seeing that it's just moving. You know, the moon is moving 2,000 miles an hour, and it still takes four minutes to cross the sun. That's how big the sun is, guys. I don't know. I just think we're in this universe. I'm just one little speck here. Ugh. So I'd get a little bit more philosophical if I had more shrooms in me, but I don't. So we are, oh, my God, it's coming out. It's coming out. filter on and re readjust oh now it's starting to get light again so this is pretty cool now we're all going to deal with traffic <laughs> so if that wasn't amazing what? that was pretty amazing wow how fast four minutes goes by hey yeah certain amount of time all right, everybody. Well, we're going to stick around for the rest of it where it, it's going to take another 20 minutes or so. But, uh, yeah, appreciate all the questions. Hopefully I'll see you guys down in Florida. And uh, play smart, everybody, and run like a god.